guys this is the very first episode of the ascended cast i'm super excited for this it's gonna be a podcast about fitness wellness health life overall so i am john sanchez got my boy co-host matt. oh my bad i thought you were <laughs> oh no go ahead matt matt Stormin van norman and so basically uh we want to do a podcast just because it's something that we've been passionate about for five six years now my experience is I've literally worked in this industry at the corporate level for LA Fitness. I've worked at the academic level for my college's uh, rec and wellness department, and then now being in a personal training field. So I have a lot of experience, a lot of things to talk about. Matt, let them uh, hear about what uh, your experience is like, what you're qualified in. Um, started working out 13 when I was a uh, freshman in high school, and then... You know, just basic, um, you know, athletic, you know, style training. Went to went to JC uh, Junior College for a little bit. Didn't didn't play a season. I just uh, went through the summer and I actually got injured. And then I chose to come back towards the hometown. Then I was a personal trainer from two thousand. I want to say 15, 16 maybe, to 2017. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Just basic personal trainer from, I went, what, 24-hour fitness, anytime fitness. And then I was going to, I think, I was thinking about personal training LA Fitness, but I didn't. Yeah. Just did sales. And then... But now, you know... I'm uh, going through a private institute called the Czech Institute. It's a corrective holistic exercise kinesiology. So it's like overall lifestyle, mind, body, spirit, reconnection. So I uh, rehabilitate people through corrective exercises um, and also overall lifestyle. So just minimizing basically the amount of stressors that are put on to us in this daily life are a lot more than people even think of. So it's kind of my job to come in and open the eyes of people and let them know that they don't have to walk around with all the issues that they do because I mean a lot of people don't know that just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal that has to deal with everything from hormonal issues skin issues um, psychological issues gut issues everything parasites you name it so one of those things is gonna be that I just fucked up pause this oh, okay yeah yeah so coming back on um <laughs> is that a good introduction yeah you should have done my introduction <laughs> my bad you're all good uh i was a little i felt like i was a little slow at first and then when i got to you know actually talk about myself i was like ooh. no you're good yeah you should have done my introduction <laughs> so <laughs> let's get back into just overall so now that matt's explained all his skill sets and i kind of summarize mine <laughs> uh let's get talking about overall so this first episode i wanted to go over kind of just like our different experiences our kind of journeys in this industry in some ways ours have been connected in other ways we've been on our own so kind of just talk about um those overall experiences what we've been through kind of uh give you guys some uh do's and don'ts if i would say and go from there so a lot of don'ts. <laughs> a lot of don'ts. Uh, a lot of don'ts. Yeah, and I that, like... <laughs> that, create, that, that, that creates the do's, though. Everything, yeah, it does. It does. Everything, uh, there's a learning lesson in everything you do. So, I will say that. Let's start uh, where you said it all began. You knew what you started working at 13. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell us why. <laughs> Got into some football. Some football. Yeah, some football. I played soccer my whole life, all the way up until high school, and then I, you know, well, I, I played, I lie, I played like one junior pee wee year, <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't, it was not, it was one of those things where I was young, I didn't know what the fuck I was even doing, so I don't, I barely even remember it, but. I think there's a sort of memory that you remember. <laughs> yeah, I didn't remember being, because I was, you know, I was on the D-line, because I was a little chubby kid, and, um. 
<laughs> the ball got hiked and I didn't move. I was just on all fours getting, getting fucked up. Help. <laughs> yeah. Not a good memory. And then I got pulled out. Yeah. And I was, then. I was excited to drink Gatorade. That was about it. Oh, yeah. So then, <laughs> for me, I played football, same. I did, like, two, three years. I think two, actually, because one year I got, I broke my, I broke my wrist. <laughs> That's so how I you play, stayed yeah. breaking bones. Well, I did for that during that time <laughs> I did. You helped one of those. But, um, yeah, I broke my wrist, and so I played two years, uh, junior All-American. And then came uh, freshman football. So we actually coaxed Matt into coming in and practice with us, because it was, like, four or five of us that were all doing that so uh we, yeah because we've been we've been best friends since sixth grade yeah so um like throughout middle school i didn't play any football or nothing like that just on the just out on the yard you know getting fucked up still <laughs> <laughs> i was never i was always that filler player i was like good enough to like you know do something but don't rely on me yeah <laughs> Like, don't rely on my ass. I might pull some shit out of my ass. Like, might. yeah, but it just it has to be a goddamn miracle. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I played goalie. Didn't have to run much. <laughs> you were a goalie. Yeah. Because <laughs> then they pull you to be goalie, like for freshman uh, soccer too. Yeah. Well, yeah. When I got out there, I was like a right defender, and then I was a goalie as well. But I was like very discouraged because I went I went straight to varsity, and then I got no playing time, and I was a little bitch. So like I was like, what the fuck? Why don't I get playing time? And I just could have you know worked harder. Yeah. Because I was, I was like, what the fuck? They put Shiloh in. <laughs> they did. And so I was like, I said something. You know what I mean? Like, like so I remember one time. I damn near cried because I couldn't get, I was, I was going to get some playing time and then the fucking game ended and then I was like, what the fuck, bro? Like, I was about to go in. I remember sitting there and this little child comes up to me. He's all like, hey, dog, it's all good. Like, maybe next time. Like, <laughs> Shiloh. Just trying to encourage me. Fresh and, in Shiloh, too. Yeah. <laughs> so him and I have known each other for a while, too. Yeah. All right, well, let's go back to, uh, oh, yeah, my bad. To weightlifting. So, uh, yeah, we did freshman football. Matt came. And that experience just in that weight room for the first day, I mean, that kind of sums up, <laughs> I think, our journey of, like, the ups and downs. Fucking Coach Biggie, dog. <laughs> this one was, like, 20 fucking years old. And he, he, his main thing he would say was back in his day, they used to do this and that. Little did we know, because this motherfucker looked 30. <laughs> I he, thought he was, like, 30 years old. Yeah, I thought he was at least, like, 28. Yeah. This yeah. Back in his day, you brought back in your day was like eight, like six months ago. <laughs> yeah, Sanji and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then so yeah, our freshman football coach he had no idea what we were doing. Like some of us were fucking squatting <laughs> ridiculously. I was doing a good morning like <laughs> RDL for my squat. There was there was no there was no structure or technique in anything <laughs> that we were taught. <laughs> I remember there's like a picture of you and uh, Aaron Vigil. <laughs> You're like spotting him. <laughs> I'm like a hundred and like thirty five pounds soaking wet. Yeah, but this man's like a fucking man child, like straight like at fourteen years old. Yeah, and then, he's like, a fucking man in seventh grade. <laughs> yeah. I remember looking over at him. This little fucking. I was like, what the fuck? Like, how old is this guy? <laughs> and Matt's like trying to spot him, and this fool's about to blow his back with like what, like four plates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had the Vans on with the high socks. Oh, yeah. The low-ass basketball shorts. Tight-ass fucking uh, cut-off shirt. Oh, man. Faux hawk. Yeah. Fucking eight inches high. Yeah. And then uh, someone, the food supposed to be watching us, was uh, two bits on the Blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> Our fucking, our fucking coaches went online and printed out something from Utah or something. No, Nebraska. Nebraska. <laughs> no, Nebraska. Nebraska State. He's like, here, put in your numbers, and I'm not going to supervise you children. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm too busy. <laughs> Texting for when we're here to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of gives it away if you know what's going on. <laughs> Sorry, Finazzo. No, I'm but, not. Yeah, I would <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah that was our weightlifting coach we had Kevin and Gino they were sold yeah I'll say that I feel like if we would have kept them we probably would have had better uh, seasons our junior and senior year 
Probably one of my first experiences with PC. <laughs> yeah. Of like, you know, the 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 brink of being soft. Like yeah. when people started getting really soft, needing fucking like stress cards and shit, and like yeah. can't handle a fucking you know, a little uh, constructive criticism. Ours hard work. <laughs> hard work. In yeah, general. hard work. We all did it, and that only one person complained. Yeah, so they got fucking let go because. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. And then uh, from there, we had uh, the legend himself, <laughs> good Coach old Coach Ax. Axe. Fucking <laughs> goddamn. A goddamn. Coach Axe himself. <laughs> At least he was a good motivator. Like, <laughs> yeah, he tried to be like, <laughs> he's like, you know, it's like a fucking roller coaster. And sometimes you're just going down. But you know you're going to come back up. You know you're going to come right back up. I thought a bad yeah. uh, like analogy. It is. <laughs> That's really what it's like. Yeah. So it's like, but then you had the dirty thirty. <laughs> no, it was the late forty. Yeah, late forty. I mean, the late forty it turned into the dirty. 30. It turned into the dirty thirty because you got play, people like fucking Kenyon. <laughs> he led the rebellion, the revolution. <laughs> yeah. He started with the white guy, the most racist one. He's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking put this motherfucker out there. <laughs> and then he's gonna start attacking the fucking blacks because that's what he was truly going yeah. for. He's like, all right, where's your ice bag? <laughs> and then they almost fought. <laughs> or that was him and Mike for the almost fought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You almost fought a couple. You almost fought Daniel, too. Did Price? He? Yeah, because you caught Daniel Price making fun of him. <laughs> <laughs> and then Coach Teams is going, what the fuck is going on here? Like <laughs> coach about a fight with my students. We're fucking children, dog. Because <laughs> oh, you're making fun of him. Making fun of his hands. <laughs> Talk about how if he could bend and bench with that fucking okay, does he have to latch his finger on So yeah, that was high school experience. <laughs> Great times. Yeah, yeah. Probably not the best for our bodies, but it's a lot to learn from. Oh fuck. We that we started drinking like what? Fucking By freshman 15, year? Fifteen, yeah. Sophomore year? Yeah, you're fourteen. I think I yeah, was Yeah, sophomore year then? Yeah. Sophomore year. We uh that was probably the worst thing that we could have done. Like I know, know what I know now. Just, bro, seriously, we fucking it, like we were drinking like we were in fucking college. It was yeah. kind of it was kind of bad. It was bad. <laughs> we, were, we were going through bottles like cheap, cheap liquor, like Amsterdam and shit like that. Yeah, pop, pop, pop uh, yeah, Potter's. Yeah, Potter's vodka, fucking Captain Captain Nelson, not even Morgan. <laughs> Captain. Nelson. Yeah, Captain Nelson or Admiral Nelson. Admiral Nelson. Yeah, Nelson. Admiral Nelson. <laughs> Mas- what the fuck. I remember pulling bottles. I remember pulling Admiral Nelson out of my trunk before practice, <laughs> popping it with ibuprofen. Timmy would be like, "Oh, I just took sixteen hundred milligrams ibuprofen." I was like, "Okay, cool. I'm gonna take fourteen hundred. Like, you know." <laughs> I can see Tim doing that. Yo, fuck me, that <laughs> fucking hurt from last night. <laughs> and then you could just smell the alcohol reeking out of her fucking pores. Uh, I wonder if like the coach ever saw us or just like. <laughs> just degenerates bro yeah <laughs> still one of my favorite memories is like I think it was after the scrimmage that we played and we won like we went and party and then the next day we had film at like 9 o'clock in the morning yeah and uh we all showed up and like you fucking were like throwing up in the bathroom throwing up time. Coach Jax was like well god damn someone had too many damn beers last night yeah a lot more than that what, that was in, what do Oh, that was the night after a scrimmage we won? Yeah, I think so. Fucking yeah. Anything to celebrate. A yeah. fucking scrimmage. <laughs> oh, we won a scrimmage. Let's go fucking party. Like, uh, Nelson was fucking passed out with fucking sunglasses on in the chair. It was like a little uh, Blue Mountain State. Like it a was. mini one. It really was. There was no Coke in there yet. There's no Coke that we know of. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there was a... Uh, no, ketamine wasn't really around like no. that. Either. Ketamine started popping afterwards. I think it was, uh, what was other shit called? Uh, we were smoking shit like Spice. <laughs> I, I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't. Well, I mean, I smoked it like three or four times. Oh, I don't know. But, yeah. I mean, it was with my brother, and then, oh. like, I, I smoked it once or twice with Matt Marinas and his younger brother. Yeah. I did Freon with it. Oh, I should not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're younger. Fuck it. Um, I did a Freon with them too. Once it was like a little tiny bit. 
It, that shit can kill you. Yeah. At least I didn't have fucking hairspray. All right. Well, hold on. <laughs> that um, was when we were still in middle school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fuck, dog. Uh, yeah, no, no, no pills or nothing were really uh-huh. around. I mean, Skyler, like that motherfucker. What did he do one time? Didn't he? Do oh, I was in cl- at school too. Yeah. That was him and uh, Mitch. Yeah, I forgot, but. Damn, I feel like we're putting a lot of people in blast. <laughs> this is fucking high school. Y'all can suck a dick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bro. I'm thinking like of all the fucking. I feel like honestly, after I want to say like, I feel like it gets worse. I feel, I feel like high school was just like uh the playground. Yeah. <laughs> and then once we like got out of high school. Oh yeah, once uh, yeah, <laughs> like once once like once we started getting places, we we're like whoa. Yeah. <laughs> then there's ass involved. And then, you know, you know, ass likes Coke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, then let's move on to the next part of our life. So well, high school was pretty interesting. Picked a lot of uh, bad habits, not just fitness-wise. Yeah. But well, uh, but don't get me wrong. This whole time, I was tough on the fucking gym still. I was like, this is like, this is probably like the the crazy part about it. I feel like we were in that gym no matter what. Oh, yeah. Like, I would get up hungover as a motherfucker, so go get up. I'm so oh, yeah. worried about my fucking pump, you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember, <laughs> uh, no. I remember, uh, so this is, like, right around, like, what, when we started probably, like, well, you were probably, what, like, finishing up your show, or you were about to do your show, probably. I remember I went to San Diego, and, uh, when we came back, bro, we, uh, had edibles in San Diego, uh-huh. like the fucking black bar. Oh, the black bar. Uh, uh, yeah, I've never dabbled in edibles, and I went straight for a 500 milligram a bar. Thousand. What? It was a thousand. Or a thousand milligram. Yeah. And uh, I, I had a fourth of it. So I had 250. Dog, I hallucinated the fucking exorcist girl. <laughs> like at the bottom of my feet, like fucking flicking her tongue at me. Like I was like thinking of the fucking craziest shit. I was sitting here in the dark trying to fucking breathe. And I was like freaking the fuck out. And then the next morning, I was still high. I was high for 17 hours. Yeah, seventeen fucking hours. I was so high, I limped out of here. Remember that? Oh, that was the, that that was this time. But yeah, that was I remember that. Yeah, oh, that was a different time. Yeah, that no, was that, that was the San same Diego. time. That was the same time. Wait, we went to San Diego. Oh, I oh I, the black oh the black oh yeah, yeah I did the black bar twice. Yeah, uh, in Ooh. San Diego. In San Diego, when fucking Clint Undertaker. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Clint, yeah, Clint Undertaker. <laughs> he ri- he rose, <laughs> he rose from the dead. Yeah. But, uh, no, like how you were saying how we, like, we would get it no matter what. Like, I remember, like, I took that that night. Oh, yeah. And for, like, that whole day, like, I was just freaking slumped. And I remember I tried going in the gym. Was that the picture where I had my Herbalife fucking, my Herbalife, uh, like, uh, bottle with the gray fucking Live Fit shirt? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that was that picture? Yeah. Yeah. We were in San Diego? Yeah. Yeah. These fucking water buffaloes. Yeah. Both of us. Water buffaloes. We were holding on to so much fucking water. Yeah. Obviously because of the fucking partying, but like, god damn. Yeah. Still went to the gym, though. Still went to the the gym gym there, and then when I got back, I tried to go to the gym, and I remember, like, how you said, like, I was trying to squat, but I was so paranoid about, like, the depth of my squat that, like, it gave me anxiety. So, like, I would go down and be like, I'm not going down low enough, I'm not going down low enough. But, <laughs> like, I would just be like, dude, like, I'm not going up. So, I remember I legit sat there and I was just like, dude, why am I still fucking high? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. <clears throat> I had to go to In-N-Out, get some food, eat real quick, and just be like, dude, what is going on? I, did, I, I ended up not working out, but I was like, what's going on? Yeah. I tried, though. I tried, but yeah. <laughs> it was the funniest thing, because I just remember trying to squat. I don't know why I chose legs all day to do that, too. I was just trying to squat, and, like, I was so, like, I got so much anxiety, like, I'm not going low enough, I'm not going low <laughs> enough. People are looking at me. Like, I, like, I was so in my head, <laughs> and I was just like, what the fuck? Just fucking paranoid. Yeah. And then, like, you said, little ass grass, you're a failure. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Back when I was 19 years old, and that's what I thought, but, uh, yeah, and then like, other time I'm thinking like when we would wake up at, like in the morning too and just be like, all right, like let's go eat and then we'll go work out. Yeah, especially yeah. on those leg days that we just freaking murder too. Oh yeah, the what it is is just when when you get into those states, is you become so disconnected with your body, you don't understand what like 
it really actually feels like to feel good. So it's like you're in this yeah. constant state of inflammation, constant state of fucking feeling like dog shit. Yeah. It becomes the norm. And then you're like, you start adapting and working with it, but then you just keep burning yourself. And it's funny you say that because I think that's where a lot of people that struggle, especially people that work in construction, people that have hard labor do- jobs, because like always like, oh, like, yeah, like, they can go to the gym and still work out and do like that. And it's not necessarily because, like, they're healthier than you or because, like, they're in such great shape. It's mm-hmm. just, like, how you just said, their body's so accustomed to that, tri- like, that kind of trauma each day in and day out that's kind of built up to it to where they don't necessarily be healthy, but they're still able to do it. Yeah, the body's resilient as fuck yeah. if you couldn't tell. Like, I mean, especially when you're younger, it's, it's, it's very true. Like, you can bounce back from so much more. Like, I know now it takes me, like, two, three days, maybe even towards, like, a week to recover from drinking. Oh, yeah. Back then, it'd be the next day, like boom. Yeah, I would feel it, but I was, like I said, I'd still go work out, like yeah. I'd still go do. But like, if I tried now, like I think uh, I went to Arizona back in June, and we drank a like, pretty good amount, like at far grew up and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then I remember I came back the next day and I tried working out, and it was just a freaking shitty workout. Like I felt like shit, and my energy was good. Like I was dehydrated. Like I know when I'm dehydrated now. Like I, like that's one thing I've been able to pick up on is like when my body's dehydrated, I know it. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, like, before, like, I'd be able to go out, like, for, like, two or three days in a row, and then be able to go work out, and now it's just, like, body slowing down, it's slowing down. It's interesting, too, though, like, you know, even though it takes, now, I mean, because I am, a lot, I'm, like, 110 times healthier than what I was before, and it takes longer to maybe recover, but it also, I could recover a little bit more efficiently now because i do know how to yeah because i I, you know like scientifically i know like what the fuck is going on you know in my body so it's like now i can fucking you know cater towards those needs instead of just you know just doing what i normally do and which i know I, i like i know where i'm depleted or i know like where i need to fucking what i need to do with like you know timing of my eating or drinking water and things like that like it's all it all plays like a really big factor in like getting your body like set up because you know your body's a a machine too so it's like you don't you don't kick it in the right gears you're gonna fucking just stall out and you're gonna burn yourself the fuck out you know exactly and you say burn out and when you're when you're saying all this about just like taking care of the body like i think longevity because i think about like the long term was like how long how long i want to work out for like how long i want to be able to like perform or just do basic things and not have pain or discomfort and not feel like it's hard to do. Mm-hmm. And so that's why, like, when you say, like, your body's adaptable, but only for so long. So, like, that's why maybe, like, when you see, like, for example, like, you see people that are, like, when, like, they're in their 20, 21, 22, 23, like, they can work out for a long period of time. Like, they're, they can go, they can push your body through it. Mm-hmm. But then once they hit 27, 28, 29, 30, what happens? Their body slows down. Injuries. Injuries, that motivation. Reoccurring injuries. Li- yeah. yeah, you know, life gets in the way, and yeah. usually, like, when people get beat down so much, they develop, like, this this uh, victimized mentality because they're in this state of mind. Because usually, too, like, you know, having an unhealthy lifestyle leads to an unhealthy mind, you mm-hmm. know, an unhealthy spirit, so it's like, you're not going to be a positive person. Yeah. And so it's not a bad thing to be a victim because you're not the only person being a victim it's just it's bad if you don't fucking understand it and then kind of like get yourself out of it also like don't settle for a victim mindset yeah i think you can't it's but okay it's, it's, it's okay it. to understand like it's okay to understand that something's happened to you and like yeah it's like it's trauma you yeah. have to deal with it but don't make that trauma the reason why you don't make a change or why you don't do something mm-hmm. or why you say you can't do this or that you're not going to be able to do this because now all you're doing is giving yourself a fall, like a something to blame. Yeah. And you're never going to move forward. You're never going to improve or get better if you always try to blame something else. Like, you have to accept the trauma. Like I said, it happened to you. Um, definitely, like I said, you, you have to understand that. But, but even right there, saying it happened to you, that's that's that victim. It happened, yeah. for, but it happened for you. You just flip it if you happen for you because then you change it to a learning a, yeah. a learning mentality and we, and, we, and we talked about this a lot and i i do really like that that mindset but also i think it falls back onto it's happening for you but mm-hmm. sometimes there's things that you can't control yeah but and that's so, still yeah. happening for exactly, you. exactly yeah. exactly and so that's why i think that's what i was trying to say is like 
there's something they're going to be out of you, the control are going to happen uh-huh. that whether or not you you have something to do with it, you have something to do they're going to happen to you. And like so i think it's like you accept that they're happening for you yeah and like what, what yeah. like like say like something happens where like you're fucking i can give you a great example for myself right now yeah. so last month uh as a personal trainer december is usually a tough month um as it is with the whole covid pandemic um i basically lost four of my clients between just christmas like okay i want to submit for christmas uh, I want to, like, stay home and be uh, safe for COVID. So all understandable things, like, at 100%. For me, it was like, okay, yeah, this sucks. Like, I just lost four clients. That's that's a good amount of money right there. Mm-hmm. So what am I going to do? And so at first, like, I'm going to be honest, like, I kind of just recollected myself. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to use this to my advantage. Uh, I'm going to kind of just let my schedule be a little relaxed for this week like i've been doing this for almost six months kind of just all like going all in all in so this might be a sign for me that like, hey like slow down and recharge your body which is what i did so it was, like for like three or four days like it was kind of just like a nice like i was there once or twice a day didn't really work out kind of just let my body uh recover my mind recover and so that happened and then literally like two or three days later like i missed what i was doing and so like it was just like okay like what am i doing like I've had my two or three days, but now, like, I need to get back to doing it. And so I redirected my energy, and then I think within, like, two weeks, I was able to get four new clients, and then the third week, I got five new clients. So it was, like, I used what was happening, like, I used it happening for me, mm-hmm. and I turned in, I said, okay, this is happening for me, and, like, this is, I kind of look at it as, like, it inspired me to go work harder. Mm-hmm. It made me go work harder. Instead of saying, oh, well, this happened to me, what am I, like, what, wh- like, why did this happen to me? It happened mm-hmm. for me, so now what well, my response was, I need to go work harder, I need to start marketing, I need to go and reach out to old clients, I need to go follow up with people that messaged me but I never got back to, and so it was one of those things to where, like, I think you have to have a mindset of, things are going to happen, but they're not happening to you, in the sense they're happening mm-hmm. for you, yeah. Yeah, it's another, another key factor in there, too, is, like, that taking that rest, it's like, because like you know in today's society it's all go 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 how much can you do it's but you know if you if you if you truly want to you know serve your purpose in this life you truly want to give back because it's how what our purpose is is to give back because you know what you give is what you get so it's if you're if you're going if you're a bullshit motherfucker going throughout life you know usually your life is gonna have a lot of bullshit stuff coming back but the moment you start you know realizing that <clears throat> Taking care of yourself is not selfish because in the end, when you can have a hundred, when you can provide a hundred percent of yourself, that means you can provide a hundred percent back to this universe. You can give back your, your honest, true self. And when you're burnt out, you're not your honest, true self. You're fucking, you're someone else. I mean, you're just, you're, you're, you're not. You start going through the motions. Yeah. I think, uh, like, for example, how you said, like, my passion and I, I use these two words like my passion and purpose. It was still there, but because, like I said, when you're all when you're burned out, when you've been doing it for so long, mm-hmm. it starts to get drained. And so I think that's what happened to me was not that I didn't like what I was doing, but because I was doing it for so long at the pace that I was, I was just drained. Like my glass was half full, so I took the time to go refill it, and that passion and purpose was refilled to where I was energized. My clients thought I was energized. My new client saw I was energized. My potential client saw I was energized about what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where you see, like, I, I got five new clients. And probably the reason why was because they saw the energy. They saw the passion I had. They saw I was my truest self. My, I was confident in what I was doing. I was happy with what I was doing. Because people see your vibration. People, it's a it's a energetic pool. It's a it's a legitimate thing. Like, you know, you usually see a lot of people that have a lot of people surrounding them. Like, genuinely, are, you know, they're smiling a lot they're they're walking upright you know sh- you know their uh, attitude is just completely different than the norm you know you get people walking around to themselves you'll feel it and then nobody wants to be around that so it's like if you can't like like john was saying how he recharged himself he might have lost some but it's like there you go recharge yourself bring those people back into your life whether it be different people or not and then you know keep it fucking going you now you just it, it was just a little reset now you're gonna boost forward it's like a bow and arrow theory you know what i mean like you know you're gonna pull the arrow so far back you gotta fucking you know sometimes just let it go 
let yeah. things go, and then you'll get boosted forward. Yeah, and it's really big. I, I actually like. I've never, I actually never heard that uh, use of the theory. Or it was just I, I don't know. I, yeah. I kind of just. I feel like I read that somewhere. Yeah, and it made complete sense as it was coming out of my mouth. Yeah, no, I I like that a lot because I think especially in this society, like right now, it's how everything is. It's very hard to let things go. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to say. I'll say this: it's very hard for people to put their pride aside and say I was wrong or you know what I I don't agree with this but go ahead and do this and that's especially in this industry it's just like uh you have all these little like different like trends all these little topics and it's like sometimes you don't need to fight every battle you don't need to be like a, a whistleblower on everything yeah and just let things go like you can only pull back the boat so much before it has to go like you have to let it go yeah it's either you yeah. let it go or it's like something's gonna happen to where like it's gonna happen regardless because yeah. that's how life is it's like yeah. you know universe don't give a fuck about time time's yeah. a real time's not even a real thing it's like you know it's like interesting it's not yeah it doesn't give a fuck <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps on going yeah we made up time we made uh, up we made up seasons like winter like like, uh, when spring comes is when people are truly should, it's when, uh, society should truly start progressing into, you know, what they, they develop during the winter. Winter is like, you know, you calm down, you come back and you fucking relax. And then, you know, things start opening back up and spring equinox and like, you know, things like that. It's like, you know, Mondays, you know, if you want to get into like, you know, the spiritual realm and shit, like a moon day. It's like, we shouldn't be working. It should be like, you know, R and R should be R and R. It's like, but it's like, it's crazy how like uh, things are uh, uh, like a uh, syn- synchronicity is pretty much like, I think if you look at it, I think it just goes back to, and we, we talked about this a lot. I just think it goes back to, I hate to say it, but programming. Oh yeah. It goes just programming, like fall, like just follow what, what's the norm. Mm hmm. And sometimes you gotta just be willing to go explore and chase and chase. Uh, actually, that's right here. Getting actually, got this company. Uh, that's feeling company. It says only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. And it's go uh, hashtag chase the vibe. And so, I think that's pretty dope. Yeah, I think uh, what you just touched on about is a lot of people aren't willing to question are really challenged the status quo, the norm, what they think is normal, what they think uh, is appropriate. And time back in the fitness industry, I think we can both say this, um, we've been influenced, we see like what certain things are pushed, how we're supposed to look, how we're supposed to eat, how, uh, how like certain people are supposed to perform, like, what's considered strong, what's not considered strong, mm-hmm. what's considered um, aesthetic, or what's pitter, uh, considered appealing, what's not. And it's like, we're, we're programmed into that through the media, whether we see celebrities, whether we see athletes, whether we see now Instagram uh, models, Instagram celebrities, influencers. Mm-hmm. And so, that's one thing as a trainer, I try to implore on my clients i just had a, a client yesterday who's 17 years old and she was telling me oh like i want to be like an instagram model. like i want to look like that and i was like okay let's go back and restart like how old is she 17 oh, okay 17 so yeah so that's what she's seeing and so she thinks that right away like that's what she has to look like and for me it's like dude i've been this entry long enough like i know certain instagram models like i've met them i've talked with them and a lot of the times it's just hype. Like, hype it's hype like the the same insecurities hype i hear cells. yeah no, but the same insecurities, the same issues that I hear from my friends, girls I know, are the same ones that these girls will have, or even worse. Like, there's even more amplified and worse because they have such a big audience, and so many eyes on them, that it's even like, that much bigger. So, mm-hmm. it a lot of times people don't know that, like, those people that have so much, like, um, following because of they because of their looks are like some of the most insecure people mm-hmm. about their looks. They are so insecure about their looks, and it develops such an unhealthy mindset that like trying to get there, you're gonna develop an unhealthy mindset mm-hmm. too because you just gotta get yourself to where yourself is capable of getting. You gotta be confident in confident, yourself. Yeah, and I think that's uh kind of we we've, we've talked about a little bit, but like. You really gotta build yourself. Like you gotta be willing to like kind of get out of the status norm, 
and be happy with yourself. One thing I can say that, like, we've, we've been pretty, I think me and you for the most part, not to say we've been perfect about it, but we've kind of always known who we are as people, like what we like, what we don't like, um, what we choose to follow, what we choose not to follow. Mm -hmm. But there's been times where, like, certain trends or certain things have made us uh, influence our decisions. Oh, yeah. When I was competing, I... Uh... That was when I was the most insecure. Yeah. When I competed and I was looking fucking juicy and jacked. And when you were looking, like, your, yeah. I was fucking like lean cuisine, fucking like for the very first time in my in my life. I never even like, because what I looked like in high school and stuff like that, like I wasn't aesthetically pleasing, like for the most part, like I was decent. I wasn't like a little fat fuck, but like I wasn't like anything hot or nothing, you know? So like I fucking... I went from that to just fucking juicy and jacked, and I was like completely different mindset. I might have been like egotistical, but super insecure still. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's just super insecure. And yeah. like, it developed this whole weird mindset of like, I look, I was so ashamed and had so much guilt and so much like, like disappointment in myself if I just didn't look a certain way. But I wasn't, I didn't care about how I felt. Yeah. I just needed to look a certain way. Yeah. And that was the only fucking thing I was worried about. Oh, yeah. And so, like, now, if you, I mean, if you, if you stop worrying about what you look like and how you, but you should worry about how you feel, how you look is going to be so much more vibrant and radiant, mm -hmm. healthy. You're just going to fucking shine. People notice. Yeah. People notice. So it's like surface level is surface level for a reason. Mm hmm. It takes a lot more time and a lot more. It take you want to talk about grit, getting gritty with it. You want to talk about grit. You got to go in. You got to get uncomfortable. You, you do. Yeah, you can't if if you can't go inside yourself and actually feel shit, like feeling shit yeah. is uncomfortable as fuck. You got. I'll say this. You got to question your faults. You can't push them away and be like, oh yeah, these are faults. But like, I'm not gonna acknowledge them. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna look at what the, the good qualities are. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look at the bad qualities. I think, uh, and that's something that I feel like you've done a lot of mm -hmm. in the past year. And same thing with me. It's like, okay, what do I know about myself that I don't like, but I try to keep trying to mask that. Like I try to like not let other people see or feel like I I don't want to see. Mm -hmm. And it's like the first, I think, step towards building that confidence in your body, building that confidence in your mind and yourself is you gotta confront those things. And accept them. Mm -hmm. And don't accept them as like, oh, like, yeah, like, this is it. Like, they're never going to get better. They're never going to, I'm not going to change. But I'm like, okay, this is where I'm at right now. This is what I see are the issues with. They're there. Now, what can I do to make them better or improve on making making them not, so I don't feel so bad about them? And I can use myself, for example. I think, uh, for me, it's understanding the gratification mm -hmm. um, and how you said like we kind of expect this to look a certain way or we expect to look um, a certain like a do certain things and for me for the longest time it wasn't so much about what I looked like but what I was doing mm -hmm. I wanted people to acknowledge or see what I was doing and get gratification from that and in some cases I did but in other cases I never got what I really wanted because I think for the longest time I just didn't I didn't do I wasn't doing what I really originally said what I wanted to do I wasn't doing what really made me happy. I was doing what I thought would make me successful, mm -hmm. what would make people like me. But I wasn't doing what John liked or what John thought was serviceable. Mm -hmm. And so it took me a lot while to figure out. But now I feel like understanding that and saying like, hey, why am I, why am I doing things that I don't really care for or things I don't really feel like are that great for other people when I should be doing things that I want to do things that I feel like are beneficial, things that I feel like that are great. And I feel like now that I'm doing that, um, I'm getting, I'm starting to get the response I want, not just from other people, but from myself. Like, I can come home and be happy in my day. I feel like I did what I did, what I did was enough. Or I feel like I want to do a little bit more just to add on to that day. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I texted you last night um, after the whole thing when Washington, D.C. with, like, the Trump protests or the, like, uh, called for this. Honestly, for most of the day, I didn't know what was going on. The mm -hmm. reason being was because I was focused on what I was doing, training my clients, focusing on my workouts I was doing, um, focusing on potential new clients, 
just focus on other things and within my realm. And I was, I was, I saw it here and there on social media, but it was nice to know that my first reaction wasn't, I need to go find out what's happening. It's like, I'll wait. I'll, like, I'll, 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 I'm sure I'll find out later. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I feel like that's big growth because I feel like if it had been even six, seven months ago, my first urge would have been like, oh, I need to go see what's going on. I need to know what's going on. Like, with like a, things like that. So like not feeding Lots my of FOMO. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like FOMO. Like oh, I need to. I was know. Yeah. So bad with FOMO. Bro. Yeah. FOMO is so like. Ooh yeah. FOMO yeah. is a uh, very. I feel like FOMO could be a very very of an own episode because I've lost about FOMO. Yeah, FOMO uh, is a fucked up thing, but it's all right. Yeah. All right. Well, we're at the forty minute mark, so kind of let's head back into what we kind of <laughs> we went a little bit off I actually i'm really happy with what we, we were talking about mm -hmm. uh i think let's go back to some of our experiences i mean if you want to give like two or three experiences that you feel like we can go back and forth that like i can share one you can share one but give like two or three experiences that we feel kind of just shaped like our whole fitness like a journey our experience let people get a better understanding of like kind of where we are or where we're coming from okay you want me to go first you want me to go first i can go first all right cool take the floor um, first legitimate experience that changed my direction in fitness would be Mr. Douglas Malo. Oh, that's gonna be good, Mr. Douglas. That name, that name alone, just yeah. <laughs> Mr. Douglas Malo, you. I love that guy. Um. First, one of the first things he told me was, "Hey, man, you have a solid physique. Your rear delts look like shit, though." You need to hit those fuckers twice a week. I'm like, all right. He's like, do one heavy day, one one day where you just do a bunch of reps, and then come back to me in like a month. That was 24. <laughs> that was at fitness. Uh, yeah, a 24 hour fitness. Yeah, 24 hour fitness. And I started training there, and you know, we started working out together. And then I was with uh, uh, Melanie and Cody. We are all training for a while together. Co me, it was me, Cody, and Doug. Cody is this like five eight five nine Native American. Oh shit, my bad. Yeah, I'm good. Um, five nine like Native American, like just juicy motherfucker. Like just this little talk in his like Native tongue while he's working out, just like getting it. <laughs> and so like I was nineteen years old, and all of a sudden, you know, I don't know if I should talk about it, like because I said Doug's name. Like what we were doing and shit. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. I mean, but we said a lot of shit. <laughs> but anyway, so Doug and I, so Doug left 24 Hour Fitness. He went to Anytime Fitness. He brought me along, and then we started my uh, my um, co competing journey. I didn't have any money for coaches, so I pretty much went off of Doug's word, my own research, and just what fucking went for it i was on the juice i was fucking but very minimal like i had no money i was going like 30 bucks like for every two weeks for like certain things just like for spending money on myself like i had no money for myself besides that and uh i fucking did two shows i competed <clears throat> play second because i fucking got beat by this like 40 year old motherfucker in in the open division this fool went on like we actually competed together in nationals again this fool like i'm talking like a 30 inch waist with like a 50 fucking i don't even know how long a, a wingspan is but this motherfucker was just ridiculous and so i went to nationals six months later so i did like a little fucking um you know uh what do you call those uh cycles where you fucking just you you run it um cruise yeah i was just cruising yeah so i fucking would stay on some testosterone yeah and then i just hop right back on the fucking you know i went on uh uh like test and nanthe with some trambolone and cheese <laughs> and then i incorporated some winstrel at the end oh, shit. and so like i was 19 years old fucking just doing like the most but with the most minimal dosages and you know, I fucked myself up. I got like, I went into this like depression and shit, and, like, like completely just fucked myself up hormonally. And then I, I, I think I still was dealing with issues, like for sure, up until this year, like yeah, hormonally wise, like probably like just fucked myself. 
the drinking probably didn't help. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm good. I'm yeah. I'm like I'm fucking I'm I'm golden now. Yeah. I feel like uh, we talked about this too before. Uh, like this is in the past like I want to say four or five months. I feel like this is the clearest version of you I've known for I'll probably say ever. Yeah, ever. I, mean, I can't really say fucking middle school because we were young, yeah. but yeah. Like this ever. is the best I've ever been. Yeah. Like, hands down. Hands down, best I've ever been. Yeah. But all that is learning. Yeah. All is learning. Yeah. And then, for my story, I guess, I'm going to just go back to kind of the beginning of uh, how I started working out and just kind of what shifted me towards, I don't even want to say this lifestyle, but just uh, my life today. And I think it just goes back to... I was actually with you. Um, I think uh, we were at Albaro's. And I remember I applied to work at the LA Fitness here in Highland. And I got the call. Like, oh, okay, you got the job. Um, to come fill out some paperwork. Albaro's. I think we are at Albaro's. Yeah. Fucking, that place is so good. Yeah. We what? were at Albaro's. And I got that phone call. And then so I started working there. And then my mind just shifted to where it was. like I was like... I don't want to say I was in a dark place, but... I was in a place of like a lot of negativity, like a lot of things in my life just weren't going my way. Uh, things weren't working out. Post high school, like eighteen, just trying to figure out like now that high school's over, what am I going to do? Missed like my first semester of college because of part of it was my fault, but just the community college system wasn't great either. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I missed out my first semester. Started my second semester and. Uh, I remember it was just like a lot of ups and downs. I think I got in a car accident like two times that year. So it was just like a lot of negativity in my life. And like that was kind of like the first step that getting that job of like things kind of shifting the momentum. Mm -hmm. And just eventually like it was just like, okay, like I'm going to work at a gym. Like I should probably be taking advantage of like having a free gym membership and working out. And so I think also, I think seeing what you were doing too was kind of inspiring too for me. It was like motivating because I think that was like when you were like pretty like dialed in. Oh yeah, I didn't. Competing. I didn't talk to any of my normal yeah. friends. Like yeah. any of my legitimate, immediate friends, I didn't talk to you pretty much for like those six that year. Well, like, I talked to you like here and there. Like we would, we would keep in contact. I was like like at least we would like talk or like, hang out. Tree. I yeah. should say like, like or like party. Or I didn't have yeah. one sip of alcohol the whole time. Yeah, but seeing what you were doing, like that was motivating. So it was just like okay, like I fell in fall into shit. I was drinking a lot too. Or I remember at nineteen or mm-hmm. eighteen, eighteen to nineteen, I was drinking a lot going out and eating, like, bullshit, like, buffalo wild wings, and so then, like, I was like, okay, like, I need to get on top of myself, like, I don't feel good where I'm at right now, I'm not happy with where my life is going, so how do I make that better, and it was just those first steps of just working out consistently, seeing the little progress, seeing the little results, seeing, like, me getting stronger, I remember, like, one of the things I was so happy about, one of my goals was, because in high school, like, a lot of people would bench two plates, I don't think I ever got there in high school, and then, like, I remember I was working on life fitness, so I got there, and I was like, all right, cool, like, I'm seeing my progression, I'm seeing things happen now, and so, just to kind of tell them to where I'm at today, like, I got, like, more connected within the fitness industry, more connected with a lot more, like, good people that I feel like have served a role and purpose in my life, whether it's from you, um, certain mentors I've had, not in the gym, but at school, uh, just in general, uh, I feel like it's brought in a lot of life lessons in my life, overcoming obstacles. I can think about when I've gotten hurt and just how a lot of people will like once they get hurt like that first injury kind of does them in. I'm working out like okay like I hurt myself so like I'll work out but I'm not gonna work out the way I did. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I tore up my my pec and my bike pretty like nasty from benching and that was kind of like in my head like okay like I'm not gonna let this be the reason why I stopped doing this or stopped working out. Mm-hmm. So coming back from that, and then just like the mental stuff too. I mean, the way I look at the gym is regardless of how my day is going, um, whether it's good, bad, or just complicated. I think the time where I work out is the one time of the day where I can I control it. It's one of the things I have I have control over. Where I can say like the effort, the energy, um, what I do. I, I control that, and the result is going to be on me. And so I look at it now, and it's just kind of like the therapy, my time for myself, my time for reflection, my time for clarity. Whether it's in the morning, I can reflect the day before, or whether it's late at night, I can reflect that day. Um, of just 
overall view myself as a person, not in a negative light, but just thinking, okay, like this is what I did today, this is what I didn't do today, um, this is what I can do tomorrow to get on top of that, I can, since I didn't do this today, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And so I think just that shift of just um, what the gym brought to my life, what the kind of purpose it did, it serves till this day, has kind of been like the, what's the, the catalyst? Pivotal point. Pivotal point, the callus for like where my life is today as a personal trader, yeah. having my own business, uh, creating my brand, um, and establishing it. So, kind of just finding your purpose, helping yeah. you develop your soul dream. Yeah, I love what I do. I mean, that's one thing I was talking about with uh, my new client yesterday was like, and even going back to where like I took that two, uh, this couple of days off to like recharge. Like, I know I love what I do. Because within that time frame, like I missed it. It was mm-hmm. like I told you, like it was sitting in my mind, like, "What are you doing?" It's like being in a relationship, you know. You, yeah. You, you go a couple of days without seeing your significant other. You guys develop a, like you guys really yeah. miss each other. Same thing with your with your uh, with your career, your profession. Yeah. I, and that's if it's thing. truly what you want to do, like it's like oh, you, you yeah yeah. And it's funny you say that too, because um, we were in like a. A team meeting or freaking whatever they want to call it uh at the gym i work at and like the one thing like i always look at and i always say is like when we have ever meetings is like they never sell it as like they, they still kind of sell it as a job like okay like yeah here you work here like as a job like you operate your business and for me I, I feel like when you're in this industry especially when like you're like an independent contractor when you're working for yourself you can't look at it as a job you have to look at it as like your like I said passion and purpose like you have to look at this like this is what you want to do like this isn't something you're doing just to make a quick book or you're, you're making to pay your bills like this is something mm-hmm. that you want to do like this is something that you want to do like you, you're happy to be here like you want to push yourself because if you don't then you're doing the same thing that you'd be doing like at nine to five you're serving a purpose mm-hmm. you're just coming in to train that hour or however you do it service that person and the, but they're just a number like that's just like a paycheck for you mm-hmm. and so i feel like the good the best trainers really really good trainers uh or even just in the fitness industry and i'm not even a trainer but the, the really really good people in the fitness industry they enjoy this they do this because they like it it's their passion it's their purpose mm-hmm. you could see it it reflects off of them and so i i went on a lot longer than i wanted to that's so cool. uh that's my story that's our first episode how you feel about it nice Pretty solid. I think I'll, it was a one. It's one of those that you know we kind of just first one and introducing ourselves. I mean, we have all the hours in the world to talk about ourselves. Oh yeah, <laughs> we're gonna have a lot more stuff. Like you can see, like we have several different talks because I we could do such a freaking like probably two hours on drinking alone. On uh, who? On drinking. Oh yeah. Uh, on drinking. Yeah, the negatives <laughs> of yeah. that. But that is it for the Sunday cast today. I'm one of your hosts, John Sanchez. And Matt Van Norman. Matt VN. Matt VN. 54. Van, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's like, are you doing my my username? Yeah, I think I did do, that's your username right now. Matt VN underscore 54. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just John Sanchez fit. But until next time, guys, thank you for listening. If you guys have any topics, any questions, any comments about this podcast, let us know. DM either of us and we'll be happy to fill it in or hear the criticism, hear that, uh, whatever you guys got to say. Mm-hmm. Till next time.